Welcome back. In this tutorial, we're going to talk about advanced display options uh, for point clouds and look a little bit at some point picking and point selection uh, options that Cloud Compare has. So for this tutorial, we're going to use some LiDAR data. Um, and I've got that on my drive here. So these, this is a uh, LiDAR data set from Oregon on the Sandy River collected by the USGS. Um, so we'll look at um, how to display some different scalar values, uh, do some color bars, adjusting those colors, uh, looking at some histograms and statistics. Um, and then uh, again, like I said, look at some kind of individual point selection uh, tools and look at the uh, multiple point picking and extraction options. So here is a LiDAR tile uh, from the Sandy River in Oregon. And so right now it doesn't look like much because we've got it uh, set to um, display based on the scalar field and the first default scalar field in a lot of uh, LiDAR data is what's called the point source ID uh, field. And so this is just a, um, an attribute that kind of illust or is the, the different flight lines usually. Uh, so here you can see this is kind of gradated from kind of yellow down here in this corner to red up in this corner. Um, and so if we scroll down in our uh, properties window down here, you can see we actually have uh, values here from 39 all the way up to 61. Um, so that's the point source ID is useful for uh, quality control in a lot of LiDAR applications, but for most geospatial applications, it's not really a, uh, a useful uh, attribute. So one of the key uh, attributes that we often want to use in geospatial data visualization is the elevation. Now in Cloud Compare, it doesn't automatically uh, let you color um, the point cloud based on the elevation. So in order to do that, we have to use a uh, tool up here in the tools menu. It's in the projection submenu, and then it's export coordinates to scalar fields or export coordinates to SF. So if we click on that tool, basically this lets us export a, any of the X, Y, or Z values to a new scalar field on the point cloud. And so you could export X and Y, but those are gonna be pretty linear color ramps straight up and down for Y or, or left to right for X. So Normally the, the default checked box is the Z value since that's what we're interested in uh, actually visualizing as the elevation values. So if we click OK, now you can see that we have the point cloud is actually colored by elevation values. So you can see the Sandy River is down here at the bottom of this valley in blue. We have the top of a hill here in red. And then these linear features down here are actually power lines in this LiDAR data set. Uh, but you can actually start to see the individual trees if we zoom in. So you can actually start to see the individual tree canopies here based on those elevations. Um, and if we rotate this down to look at that 3D view, you can definitely see how those uh, elevation colors uh, really come out here. So in our properties window here, one additional thing that we can actually add to our display is a, uh, an actual color scale. So we can actually look at the values on the screen um, at the same time. And so over in the color scales section where you choose the actual color ramp, there's a visible or not visible checkbox in there. And if you click on visible to make it, to pop it out, it'll actually show the, um, the values and the color bar uh, as part of your uh, display over here. So you can actually move your point cloud off to the side here and see this uh, color bar. Now, you can actually change the size of the font and the size of the color bar in here if you'd like. 
and in uh, your display menu, there's display settings. And then in here, there is the uh, color scale. And so here you can actually change the width of the color ramp. It's in pixels, so you'll just, you might have to just play with it. Um, so in this case, it was about 50 pixels. I'm gonna change it down to 30 pixels to make it a little bit narrower. Uh, depending on how you want to export um, point clouds, which will be in another video, or export screenshots of, of different point clouds, you may wanna make that a little bit bigger. It makes it a little bit easier to read on export. But for now, I'm just gonna switch that to uh, 30 pixels. And then if you go down to other options, the two th other things that you can uh, change are the default font size. So you can make this larger or smaller, okay? And that'll actually change the number of divisions that pop up on your uh, color bar there. Uh, I'm gonna leave mine at about 14, so it's reasonably large for me. And then the other option for your color bar is the number of uh, decimal points or the, the number precision that you want to display. So usually I leave this at three. I work mostly in metric uh, coordinates, so meters. And so three decimal places get you to millimeters. So that's generally good enough for most things. Uh, but again, you can change this if you've got something where you have a lot more precision um, in, a, in a really detailed uh, kind of terrestrial LIDAR scan or photogrammetry project. You can actually up that to um, however, many, however many decimal places you want. But generally speaking, about three or four is, is generally enough for most uh, geospatial applications. So we'll leave that there for now, uh, just so we can see how things change uh, with those different color ramps. Um, so another thing that we can change uh, with our different color ramps are the, what's called the, the display values and the saturation. And so on, in our, uh, the display parameters where we have our histogram over here on the um, left-hand side of the screen, on the top, you can see there's gonna be two numbers or two kind of uh, selection boxes with numbers in them. And so these correspond to the, the low value and the high value that are displayed in our scalar fields here. And then the bottom numbers are for what's called the saturation. So the top and bottom numbers of our absolutely saturated uh, top and bottom colors. And so the displayed values are basically kind of which points are displayed and which points are not displayed with color. Um, and so there's two ways to change this. So one is to actually kind of manually go in and edit those values. So in this case, I'm gonna take the, the top value and this is, is 420, 420 uh, meters. So let's say I wanna clip off a little bit of this to not show colors at the very, very top end. And so let's say I wanna change this to say 390, okay. And so if I change that, you can actually start to, you can see that some of these points over here at the very, very top of our hill actually became gray rather than colored. And so down here in our uh, color ramp or color histogram, you can see that we've got this gray uh, area off on the right hand side, the upper end of our histogram, showing those grayed out values. And so the other way to change these is with, with these little circle handles in the, um, the display parameters. So you can actually use these to change the upper end uh, with the handle on the right or the lower end with the handle on the left. Okay? And basically those gray out those values uh, that are outside of those handles. So it's only showing what's between those two handles. Now, if you truly want to not display those values, you can actually go on the little, the second tab in here called parameters. And there's an option in here called show NAN or out of range values at, in gray. And so that's basically what we're doing here is we're showing those in gray. But if you uncheck that box, it'll actually not display those at all. So if I go in here and start to lower that upper end, you can actually see that we're basically just 
stripping down all of that landscape and not displaying any of that higher elevation data now. So this can be useful if you've got kind of a noisy data set or there's specific elevations that you don't care about in your data set, you can actually just not display them completely. Um, in the next video, we'll actually talk about extracting those out or clipping them out completely. Um, but for now, we'll just kind of deal with the, just the display aspect. So if you ever wanna get back to the, the default display, you can just pull those two handles back out to the right and to the left and you've got all your data back. So the other two uh, values in here, like I said, were the saturation values. So these are the, the upper and lower ends for the kind of extremes of our color ramp here. So in this case, we've got blue down at the bottom and red up at the top. And so in our case, uh, let's just say we wanna change the upper value here. So right now we have red values as kind of the very, very tips of the trees and the power line uh, pylons here. So you can just barely see the red kind of poking out in the upper left corner here. But let's say we wanted to actually lower that so that we actually have red being at the top of the hill on the ground versus just up in the treetops. So again, you can manually change these values if you're looking for a specific uh, value. So in this case, I'm gonna drop that by about 10 meters to 410. And so now you can see that we've got a little bit more saturation uh, in the reds um, in these upper elevations. But what you can see is that the other two handles in here, these triangle handles, are the saturation values. So if you click and drag on those, and you can actually start to really saturate the colors at the upper end and the lower end of our point cloud here. So grabbing that, up, that, that upper value handle, we can change how much kind of where the upper value is in our color ramp. So right now, where I said about 351. So anything above 351 is gonna have that real deep, deep red color. And then on the lower end, again, we can bring up that color so that we have the, the blues kind of filling in the lower elevations. And so the real reason that you'd wanna ever do this is that if there's some, a certain set of values that you're really interested in, and you want to get a lot more color just in a very specific range um, in your data set, you can uh, grab those saturation handles and move things around so that you're just looking at kind of the color ramp in kind of the area of interest of elevations that you're looking at. And that goes for any scalar field. It doesn't just have to be elevations. We can look, we'll look at um, a couple other ones here in just a second with things like intensity and especially in a LiDAR data set, the classification values as well. So again, you can get back to the default color ramp by just moving those handles all the way back out to the right and to the left. So let's look at a couple other applications of uh, our display parameters down here. So one of them would be in a LiDAR data set, especially, is to look at um, things like the intensity values. So if you go under, if your LiDAR data has this, um, under the uh, scalar fields, we can look at the intensity values. And so in this case, um, intensity in a LiDAR data set is the kind of the intensity of the light returning to the sensor. Um, and so things that ha are really reflective are going to show up kind of more bright white and things that are less reflective. So in this case, things like the water down here are going to be uh, darker in the intensity values. And so here you can see that we've got a histogram uh, going from zero, which is, you know, fairly dark in the returns up to a value of 255. So this is 8-bit data. But the kind of the max value is actually more uh, down in the, let's actually, we can pull down our, actually gonna use our saturation value rather than our display value. So our, our peak, uh, peak value here is actually more around um, kind of 195, maybe 190. Um, so if we pull down our um, saturation handle there to be 
uh, kind of more in line with the actual histogram. Now we actually get a better view of the intensity values um, in the data set. So this is one kind of good example of how you might use these saturation handles to kind of reconfigure the color ramp to match the actual values. You could do this on the lower end if you were missing lower end values as well. Um, so another way to use the displayed values, okay, and especially a LiDAR data set is with things that like the classification um, values. So most LiDAR data sets will have some kind of classification um, and the actual numbers actually do correspond to ASPRS uh, kind of standard classification uh, key values. And in most LiDAR data sets, you'll have at least two classifications. One will be um, the value of one is basically um, not classified. A value of two is classified as the ground. And the values go up from there uh, for different things. So you can have classifications for vegetation or uh, the built environment or water. Um, those would all have different classification values. So these are integer values. So they're not actually uh, kind of one or 1.5. They're one or two alone. Uh, so in this case, you can actually see that our color ramp here it basically has a big spike at one and a big spike at two up here at the upper end. And so we have uh, data in this data set, at least, that is classified as ground and basically not ground, everything else. And so if we look, if we rotate this underneath, you can actually see that we have a lot more green points kind of showing through on the bottom, which is the, the ground surface, versus when we look at the top surface, is mostly blue, those kind of unclassified points or everything else points. So in this case, if we grab our uh, display ranges uh, or display handles here, if we actually move this off of the one value, you can now see that we have green dots and gray dots. And if we actually remove just the, or if we remove the, the gray values, Okay, now we're just left with the green values, which is the ground classified points. Okay, so if we zoom in and tilt down, you can see that we've actually essentially just stripped the vegetation off of this landscape, uh, which is one of the really, really cool things to do with LiDAR, is to be able to just <laughs> strip off all the trees and just look at the, the bare ground in this case. Um, so that's a good kind of option for uh, kind of a quick, uh, view of uh, LiDAR data in terms of using those display and saturation values to, to look at different data. Um, like I said, we'll look at in the next video on kind of extracting out these ground, ground points versus the other points um, and really look at some kind of other advanced uh, kind of manipulation techniques in the next video. But for now, I just wanted to show you these kind of display ranges and saturations as a uh, kind of base way to kind of do some basic visualization. So I'm going to switch back real quick to our um, Z values, okay, so that we have all of these values again. And so I wanted to look at a couple other kind of quick, quick analysis tools, I guess, and display uh, things that you can do. And so these are looking at the, uh, the histogram of your displayed um, scalar field. And so there's one way to visualize that is on the color bar over here on the right hand side of the screen. And so there's the color bar itself, but you can see just on the outside of this, you can actually see kind of a little bit of a bumpy surface. And that's actually a distribution of the values in uh, our scene here of those different values. So you can turn that on and off in the display options. Um, I usually leave it on because it is actually kind of interesting to see. But if you want a more kind of quantitative histogram on your toolbar up here at the top, there is a show histogram button. So if you click on that button, that'll actually give you a output histogram of the Z values, so the Z values in our data set here, 
and a count of the number of points uh, that are in kind of each class here. And so the default in here is a, a 256 division um, classification. Um, and I'll look at how to change that here in just a second. So you can just do a visualization of this. There's a couple export options over here on the right hand side. There's an export histogram as an image and export is a CSV. So you can actually export this data out to another program for Excel or if you want to import it into Python and make a graph in Python. Um, but you can do this with any scalar field that is on the point cloud. So that's a pretty powerful thing to do once we get into change detection uh, later on. You can actually export our change detection histograms um, and look at those in kind of a more quantitative way. Um, another option for, with the histogram is to actually overlay some statistics on it. And so next to the histogram button, there is a fit a statistical model on the active, active scalar field. So if you click on that one, there's uh, two different distributions that you can fit to this, a Gaussian distribution and a Weibull distribution. Um, Gaussian's the most common for most statistics that we use in our geospatial. This is the mean and standard deviation or kind of a, the bell curve or normal distribution. And so if we click on, on Gauss, which is the default and say, okay, that'll actually pull up the histogram and actually put on top of it a, the Gaussian curve with the mean and standard deviation uh, for our uh, point cloud. So again, for the elevations here, this isn't so much of a useful thing um, from a statistical visualization point, but once we get into things like change detection, uh, being able to put on this distribution uh, helps you kind of do some quick statistics and, and some quick visualizations of you know, how good your data set is if you're doing error analysis or how much change there has been if you're doing change detection. So just some interesting uh, good different display options here for our different scalar fields over here. So the last thing I want to look at uh, today is um, some point picking options. And so this is a way to actually get information about an individual point or a couple of different points on uh, the data set. And so I'm going to go back to our straight up and down view here. And then I'm gonna zoom in on the river here. And this is actually where, well, if you're familiar with the Sandy River, there was a dam removal here um, in, I forget which year it was, 2009, 2010. Um, and so this is actually the former dam site here. So we're gonna zoom in on this just so we can, we can see uh, a little bit clearer. And I'm gonna adjust the saturation so that we have Kind of a little bit better saturation down here at the bottom end of our uh, our, our reach here. I think I may actually change our color ramp here too to be a little bit more of a uh, kind of wicked color ramp. So this is a this is based on a temperature color ramp, but you can see this gives us a lot more kind of fidelity. It's a lot more colors. Uh, in our data set here, but it's a little bit more visible as well. So with your, uh, the point cloud that you want to do your point picking on selected in your database tree, that's important to have the actual point cloud you want to be selected, uh, kind of highlighted up here in your database tree. And then if you go up to just above that, there's a point picking tool. It's a little kind of uh, reticle with an arrow uh, so if you click on that, okay, that brings up this secondary toolbar um, in your 3D display window over here. And so the default uh, kind of option over here is this first one, which is uh, select one point and display its information. And so all you have to do is, if you're interested in a point in your data set or an area in your data set where you want to get some information, you can click and it'll click, it'll find the, the closest point to your, um, your cursor and display its X, Y, Z values and then whatever scalar field you have selected or displayed. So in this case, you can see that there's 
actually two sets of XYZ values. So in this case, there's the local XYZ. These are the globally shifted coordinates. And then the, X, the other XYZ values are the real world coordinates, so the actual coordinates. So here you can see those gigantic numbers associated with a, a UTM uh, coordinate system here. And then because we have the coordinate Z uh, scalar field active, you can see that we're actually showing the elevation for that point. Okay, so you can click on individual points. And so you can see that, like say that the, the top of this tree is 280 meters versus the riverbank down here is 215. So you can actually start to do some basic calculations of like say something like tree height. Uh, we'll do that in the next video uh, a little bit. Um, but just clicking on individual points here to get uh, kind of the point information. So the other tools that are available in this um, data set that are useful are things like uh, measuring distance. So you can actually select two points and measure a uh, distance between them. And so this is a straight line distance and so in a three dimensional distance. So you have to be careful. This isn't just a planimetric kind of uh, flat distance. So if you selected something down in uh, the riverbank here and up on the top of a tree, it's actually gonna be a three dimensional straight line distance between those two points. But just as a, an example, so if we wanna select and kind of measure the, the kind of width of the river here, so we can click on one, one bank and the other bank, or sometimes it screws up like that on you. So select one point and then select the other point and then it'll give you a distance in whatever units uh, your point cloud is projected in. So in this case, we're in meters. So 18.36 meters is our width right there. We wanted to look at a wider section down here, select that point and that point, and we got 41 meters down there. So it's not super precise um, in terms of zoomed out uh, picking points like this. And so if you really wanna be precise, you actually do need to zoom kind of way in and pick very specific points uh, to measure between. So in this case, I'll choose that point and say this point over here to try to get a nice perpendicular uh, cross section distance here. So the other tools uh, that are available let me get my point size down here. Are a uh, angles between points. So you can actually pick three points in this case. So start with, uh, you can just click on three points and get, it's called the triangle distance between them or the triangle angles. Uh, so you can actually get angles between points and distances between points. Um, the area, you can calculate some basic areas this way as well. Um, granted it's triangle, triangular area, so that might not be that useful for you, but the angles between points could be useful uh, for things like uh, surveying applications. Um, the other tools up here are uh, not totally useful. Uh, you can actually label different points and uh, reset things. And actually the, the kind of the most important is to actually, the X at the end actually closes out this tool. So if you're done point picking and you actually wanna get back to being able to rotate and zoom around, uh, you actually do need to close this tool out. So that's useful for picking individual points and doing some basic uh, kind of distance measurements. But let's say you actually wanted to pick points out of your data set and actually save them out as a separate data set. Uh, potentially, you know, digitizing is one uh, kind of key example of this, is to again, select the point cloud that you want to uh, have active, and then use what's called the point list picking. So that's right next to the point picking tool is the list picking. And so in this case, what you actually get is a window up here. And then as you start to pick points, those points get populated in uh, this list up here. And so let's say if you wanted to digitize points, I'm just gonna digitize the, the, the kind of river here um, in a rough way. Okay, you can digitize 
points this way. And then if you want to export those out as a, as a new point cloud, you can actually use the save icon up here to export them out uh, to a CSV file, or um, you can actually export them to a new point cloud as well uh, that just gets saved in uh, Cloud Compare. Um, so the trick with this, uh, in my experience, is to uh, be careful and don't do too much at once. I'd actually save these out at regular intervals because if you do screw up or if you hit the checkbox or the X while you still have these picked and you don't have them exported, uh, you will lose that digitizing work. So I generally encourage uh, people to regularly export um, the XYZ values and just kind of keep a running tab so you can say, you know, point list one, point list two, point list three. And then because they're just CSV files, you can merge those pretty quickly um, outside of Cloud Compare. Uh, but um, that's one way to kind of do some basic point, point digitization in a point cloud like this. So once you're done with this, um, you can hit the the green X button gets keeps those points labeled, and so you can actually see those in your database tree as this pick points list. And so you can actually turn those on and off with the checkbox over here. So if you want to actually label points and um, and uh, and keep those labels um, as kind of kind of feature labels, uh, you can actually leave these uh, labels on uh, rather than just um, deleting them out. So that's the basic display and some point picking um, and, and digitizing uh, functionality in Cloud Compare. And in the next video, we'll talk about kind of some point cloud extraction techniques. So segmenting, cross sections, we'll look at subsampling point clouds as well. Uh, filtering by scalar fields, um, and then also looking at uh, creating some uh, mesh surfaces and rasterizing uh, different data sets as well to get um, DEMs or uh, other kinds of uh, raster data out.